Okay, uh, bonjour à tous et à toutes. Welcome to French Today. We're going to look over um, a PDF from the first section of Chapter 3 um, that we're going to go through this week. It's titled Les Loisirs, which means hobbies. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we get to this beginning section. Uh, there is an introduction that I'll read to you, and then we'll look through a couple of pages of vocabulary. And the idea with these vocabulaire pour la lecture sections is that it's supposed to set you up by giving you enough new vocabulary to pair with that whatever French you already know um, to allow you to get some meaning out of the, uh, the readings that come in the pages afterwards. So here's our introduction. Uh, en France, le temps libre ne cesse pas d'augmenter. Cela est dû, bien sûr, à la réduction du temps de travail mais aussi à l'allongement de l'espérance de vie. Les gens vivent plus longtemps et ont donc plus de temps pour les loisirs. Pendant leurs heures de loisirs, ils font du sport, ils écoutent de la musique, ils regardent la télévision, ils bricolent, ils sortent avec des amis, etc. Et plus ils ont du temps libre, plus la partie de leur budget consacré aux loisirs augmente. All right. So, some good French through here, um, starting back at the first sentence. En France, le temps libre ne cesse pas d'augmenter. So, in France, free time um, doesn't cease to get bigger, like they're getting more free time. Cela est dû, bien sûr, à la réduction du temps du travail, mais aussi à l'allongement de l'espérance de vie. Les gens vivent plus longtemps et ont donc plus de temps pour les loisirs. So, this is as a result, of course, of a reduction of work time, but also at a lengthening of life, like the hope of life or like your lifespan. People are living more, or they're living longer, and they therefore have more time for hobbies. Pendant leurs heures de loisirs, ils font du sport, ils écoutent de la musique, ils regardent la télévision, ils bricolent, ils sortent avec des amis, etc. So during their hours of free time or their hours for hobbies, they play sports, they listen to music, they watch television, they tinker, they go out with their friends, etc. Et plus ils ont du temps libre, plus la partie de leur budget consacré aux loisirs augmente. So, and the more time, free time that they have, the larger part of their budget is, uh, is consecrated or set aside for hobbies. All oh, right. So with that, um, scrolling down, we have uh, the first section here. It starts to deal with sport or their sport type things and then other, other hobbies. So we have le repos, and le repos is a word for rest or relaxation. Le delta plein um, is the word for uh, hang gliding. Le surf des neiges, they also say le snowboarding, but it's for uh, snowboarding. Un baladeur is the word for a, like a portable music device. Un chemin is a path or a walkway. And then we have the verb bricoler, which means like to fix stuff, to, to tinker, to do little things, like to have a workshop kind of thing. It's a, kind of a hard verb to really uh, uh, completely translate. Um, but what do we have here? Après le delta plan, il mérite bien un peu de repos. So after doing some hang gliding, um, you've earned a little bit of relaxation. Let's repeat these couple of words here. Um, repeat after me, please. Le repos, le delta plain, le surf des neiges, scrolling down, un baladeur, un chemin, and finally, bricolé. All right. Um, second page. Uh, as we finish up here, we have people watching the TV. So a word for a television is un écran, like a screen. We have un téléspectateur and une téléspectatrice. Um, terms for a television watcher. There's a masculine and a feminine uh, version of that. Let's repeat those three terms. Un écran. Okay. Un téléspectateur. And finally, une téléspectatrice. All right. On this side, we have some sentences. Uh, les Français n'allaient plus beaucoup au cinéma. Ils regardaient surtout la télévision. Mais aujourd'hui, les spectateurs ont repris le chemin des salles. So these couple of words here have worked their way into these sentences. 
So the French weren't going very much to the movies anymore. They were watching television instead. But today, uh, watchers, les spectateurs, uh, have gone back to movies. They, they return to theaters. All right, and the final section here we'll look over is this plus de vocabulaire part, where they give us several good words, and then they define those words in French. We'll read the word and the definition. Um, we'll go over what they mean, and then I'll have you repeat them. So we have une dépense, which is the money you have to pay. It's an expense, l'argent qu'il faut payer. Une récompense is a reward, ce qu'on reçoit pour une bonne action, like what you get for a good action. Um, we have la détente, which means like to stretch, but it's a term for relaxation, la relaxation. Um, un adept or une adept is someone who's a fan or like a disciple, someone who follows uh, uh, music or a band or a sport. Uh, moyen or moyenne is a way of saying average. It's not trop long, grand, court, petit. It's like the opposite of extreme. It's not too long, too short, any of that. It's average in the middle, moyen. Consacré. Uh, means to give yourself completely to, to consecrate, to, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, donner, employé totalement. We have augmenter, which means to get larger or to add to. Uh, baisser means to lower. It's like the opposite of augmenter. If you mispronounce that as baiser, it can be a bad word, so let's not do that. And then we have faire de la raquette, which is an expression uh, to go snowshoeing. Marche dans la neige avec des raquettes. So like, it's like a, like a tennis racket over your shoe. That's what it looked like in the old days, so to go snowshoeing. So let's repeat these couple of words, and we can be done with this section. Here we go. Repeat, please. Une dépense. Une récompense. La détente. Un adepte. Une adepte. Moyen. Moyenne. Consacré, augmenté, baisser, faire de la raquette. Perfect.